off we go with a few slides. So welcome to this uh, LiveQ webinar, introducing LiveQ. Um, this is uh, what it will be about, online language activities. Um, just for those who don't know who we are, um, my name is uh, Bert Wilin, um, and um, also uh, online are my colleagues Dirk Verbeke and Dikken Minta, and also Philip van Lerbergen, and there is one more colleague uh, online, that is Thomas Sanders. We're all working in the same team here at Televic Education, um, and we also are all building uh, this new environment which is an online uh, language learning environment. Uh, you can contact any of us if you have uh, specific questions uh, after this webinar. Um, who we are, um, this is also Televic Education. Those who know uh, who we are and what we do uh, probably know we have two uh, main activities. One, and that's the oldest activity, uh, one activity is uh, building language labs and interpreter uh, uh, teaching and learning labs. Um, that's the three pictures you have on uh, the top of your screen now. Um, language labs, um, uh, fixed rooms uh, with computers, uh, both for teachers with a teacher position and then different student positions. Uh, of course, with headphones um, that allow teachers to control classrooms and to uh, do language exercises in a, a network environment with, within a classroom, within a specific uh, class. And then we also um, uh, more recently uh, tweaked that uh, system and upgraded that system to make it uh, interpreter uh, proof and to uh, also allow you to use it within boots and uh, interpreter learning situations. The other activity at Televic Education at the bottom is the online platforms that we do. Um, um, we, we have several online platforms for assessment and evaluation and exercises and uh, assessment queue is probably uh, the most known and spread one. We also do translation queue about translation revision, and we're adding live queue to that now. Um, so those are all online learning and evaluation platforms. Now about live queue, um, what we want to solve is uh, this, and you see the small coronavirus on the right of the screen. I mean, the coronavirus uh, was not the real reason or origin of our plans to, to create LiveQ. We were already doing it, but it has been a catalyst, of course. Uh, it has been uh, speed up, sped up uh, with the coronavirus. What we want to solve is uh, the situation where uh, you want to teach, learn, or evaluate languages. So it's about language teaching, learning, and evaluation in a hybrid classroom setting. So that combines live students and remote students for both synchronous and asynchronous activities. That's what we want to solve with this new environment, LiveQ. Language teaching, so it's really oriented uh, to speaking language uh, activities learning and evaluation in a setting where students can be in the classroom and outside the classroom and uh, both for synchronous activities meaning that you are all together uh, at the same uh, moment in the class or uh, remote but also that platform can also be used by students whenever they want to do exercises and train themselves that means without a teacher being uh, available at that time. So all those things combined. Um, people often ask, uh, what, what do you understand? Uh, what do you mean by the hybrid classroom? Well, this is more or less our definition in this uh, context here for the hybrid classroom. It's the combination of local and remote participants in one class where the teacher can be in control, but the students can also do self-practice within the same environment. So they don't have to leave uh, at switch environments. They can do both local and remote, uh, both teacher controlled and student self-practice in the same environment. So in, a, in this is the uh, 
graphic overview or schematic overview of that. On the left side, you have the live synchronous version hmm, of the, the teaching situation. There is a teacher, there are students live in the classroom, but there are also students through a, a, a remotely connected uh, that can follow the teacher on their screen, of course. And then the same platform can be used, and that's on the right side, for students that log in anytime, anywhere, um, with any device, to go to the, 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 the exercises and do their exercises. So all of this will be done from within the same live queue platform. <clears throat> so this is what we present, the, the platform uh, what we call live queue, and of course it's about reliable interaction, which is one of the baselines of the Televic group. Um, live queue is an online platform, so it is uh, working from within a browser, both for teachers and for students. There is no install required. You don't really don't need to install anything. Uh, it works in uh, most browsers. Um, Everything that you do as a teacher or as a student is securely and automatically stored on our servers. And depending on where you are based in the world, we will have servers available near you to make sure it is GDPR or country specific uh, uh, data privacy law compliant. Um, and it works with existing learning platforms. That is very important. I mean, if you already use an existing learning platform like Blackboard or Canvas or Moodle, um, you don't need to uh, uh, re-import and manage your students again. There is uh, this option to uh, do single sign-on or to have LTI links included in your platform, which means that by simply clicking such a link, a student will work in our environment without having to re-log in. Again, I think that is very important uh, and uh, very interesting for your student management. <clears throat> the three pillars of the platform, and uh, in this webinar, we'll uh, spend most of the time on a demo of this uh, platform, but I want to go into a few slides uh, to show you some of the, the basic principles. The three pillars are uh, preparation, delivery, distribution, and review. So as a teacher, you can prepare your language lab class, your virtual language class in the platform. Um, you will see me uh, do that uh, in a while. As a student, you can go to the platform, do your activities that are either initiated and monitored by the teacher if it's a synchronous session, or if it's an asynchronous session, you can just do that on your own and do self-practice. You will see how you can do that as a teacher to set uh, exercises available for self-practice. But as a student, you can either go to it on a specific moment in time that was agreed with the teacher, or you can go whenever you want. And then both the student and the teacher can do review. So afterwards, uh, the, the teacher, can have a look and watch what the students have been doing or listen to it if it was only audio and can give feedback and share that uh, amongst each other. So everything is stored on the system and you can go back to it and re-listen or watch what has happened. I will do a live demo now, uh, which is quite a thing uh, because we're combining this GoToMeeting environment with another environment that is uh, going to uh, to do live communication but what i will do in this demo you will see me as the teacher i have three or four uh, students in my class uh, some of my colleagues are online as students in the system and as a teacher i will create uh, a few activities i will create a conversation activity i will create a speaking or recording activity so that part will be just me, the teacher, and then I will launch this session or this uh, uh, lesson or course, as you want, as you want. and you will see other students as participants in the class. They will do that now during this webinar in a synchronous session, meaning that I, as a teacher, will be able to monitor, live monitor, what the students are doing. 
So I will be monitoring live what the students are doing, um, but everything is re recorded anyway. So um, um, after the session, I can review what everyone has been doing uh, in the platform. Okay. Um, as for the asynchronous uh, demo, um, that, that is uh, the second part. If you want, you can you will see me turning the activities into a self-practice mode. So existing exercises that you did in the synchronous mode can be uh, switched into self-practice exercises. That's just a simple button in the system, meaning that they are available for a longer time and they don't need to be initiated anymore by the teacher. They're just available for students to practice. So that means that students can access those exercises whenever they want. Finally, and Probably we won't have time enough to, to show that in this webinar, but as a teacher, I cannot monitor live what the students are doing in this asynchronous session, of course. Um, but I can go to the platform and see what students have been doing uh, as soon as they finish. Everything is recorded and I have access to their performances, to their recordings. OK, enough said. Um, let's go to the environment itself. This is live queue. Um, this is uh, the environment, the portal that everyone will see, both teachers and students, when they log in. You can see here that I have already prepared a class, uh, and I did that yesterday while preparing this webinar, but I will repeat that for you to see how that works. So as a teacher, I will create now, add a class. So I will say, I will give an English class October 23. Today started at, for instance, at 10. And this class will take, for instance, two hours. Okay. I am the lecturer and I will create this in course number one. In your situation, this will be filled with your specific courses. And then, of course, very importantly, I switch on microphone, webcam, and screen sharing options. If I don't do that, the system won't ask to uh, the students to share their screen, enable their webcams and screens. So this is a, an important step, okay? I go to next and then I choose the participants. So you can see here, there are four, five groups available. The, these will be typically your student groups or classes or groups uh, that you have defined. Or then you will also have individual students that you can uh, select for the class. In this situation, I prepared this group of students in this uh, webinar here, and I will say finish. Okay. <clears throat> now you can see here the English class I just created from 10 to 12, it's available. If I go into it as a teacher, there are no activities yet. Okay. So I can either reuse activities that I created before, but I will add new activities here. So I click here on add and I create a conversation activity. I will enter the instruction for this activity here. And I will write down like um, discuss the current situation in the Brexit negotiations and I will add that this activity is like for eight minutes okay this is my instruction I could add more text I could have a, a video inserted here or an image or a, a press article whatever um, that can be anything you want let me give this activity a name Brexit conversation okay and at the bottom here you have a few options that say um, recording controlled by participants no i want to record uh, as a teacher automatically that means that everything that they will say will be recorded automatically and do i want audio only or both audio and the webcam um, in this case let me go for audio and video so i can also see uh, what they are saying and uh, 
how they are, uh, uh, for instance, how confident they are when they are talking, etc. And I will save this activity. Okay, I could start off this activity right away, but I will prepare in my class here. I have this Brexit conversation uh, activity that I uh, just pre uh, prepared, but I will add another activity to my course, which is a speaking activity. And for that speaking activity, I will say, please watch, sorry, <clears throat> watch this video about procrastination. And then uh, make a summary of about two minutes. Okay, so this is my instruction, and in this uh, instruction, I could, for instance, add a YouTube link. YouTube procrastination. This is the one that I'm looking for. It's a funny one, by the way. It's a really, oh, that was the YouTube advertisement. So what I do here is I just clicked, copied the YouTube URL. I click embed the video and I paste the video here. So it is embedding this YouTube video on my screen. I could also upload a source file myself, but I prefer to do it with this video. And I say save. Okay, let me call this pro cross and go back to the activity. So you can see as a teacher in just three minutes, I created two activities for the students. And uh, I will ask my students to go online now. <laughs> Please uh, join the class. So what I can see already that some of my uh, colleagues who are the students in this course now already logged on. Um, and uh, I can, for instance, see that uh, student Thomas has everything OK with student Philip. There is a small issue. Well, student Philip didn't share his screen. Uh, that's fine. I mean, uh, well, that's not fine. <laughs> I will ask Philip to, to share it, but for some reason, probably he uh, didn't share his screen. And uh, student Dickin should become available as well as a participant in this course. So perhaps Dickin, because I just created this course, you can refresh your uh, portal screen and you should, well, there he is. So you can see that I have four participants in this course now. Um, so I go back to the activities and let me say that I start this activity now. So if I go back to the PowerPoint slides, we're in a synchronous mode now. Now I am the teacher and I start an activity synchronously with the students that are uh, remotely connected. I could have students here with me if they connect to the same system, they will be in the exact same environment. So this works for both uh, live students and remote students. If I click start as a teacher, and that uh, the, 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 stu the system um, suggests me now, because it's a conversation activity, to create groups. I can decide how many participants there are per group, and I can shuffle the groups if I want, but I'm happy with these groups. So what I do now is say here at the bottom, start. Okay, so this activity has now also started on the screens of the students. So they will see with whom they are paired and they can start discuss this uh, Brexit uh, for a few minutes. On my screen here, as a teacher, you can see the two groups. You can see that both groups are being recorded automatically. If I go into one of the groups, and uh, this is funny because I have two systems uh, available now that use my microphone. Um, you can see that I can see and I can listen in to what they are saying. So you can hear 
<laughs> and I can hear my British colleague uh, calling the Brit Brexit situation a disaster. So if I switch this off, then uh, I'm not listening to them anymore, but uh, live listening, discrete listening to them anymore, but it's still being recorded. If I want to talk to them, I switch on this and I can speak to them. Okay, now um, in this situation, <laughs> it'll be combining the go to meeting speech and the live queue speech, but this is what is happening. Uh, for some reason, they did not share their screen, um, and, and uh, but uh, in a normal situation, I would perfectly have their webcams available, and that will be recorded as well. Perhaps, well, there you go. I'm listening into Thomas now, and you can see uh, that I could see Thomas's webcam uh, perfectly. Okay, so this is conversation is is going on um, because it's a synchronous session. I have the control, so as a teacher, I can stop this activity now. Mm -hmm. um, it has automatically recorded uh, those two sessions. So uh, today, immediately, right now. Or tomorrow, I can come back to this, click on this uh, uh, on this conversation group, and watch the group. Uh, your hair is perfect, Thomas. Um, so I can see the screens of the uh, no, see the webcams of the students con uh, in the conversations and hear what they were discussing. Okay. Um, one step back and i'm back in the uh, activity section of this uh, live synchronous course i go to the second uh, activity and like in the previous one i have to start the activity um, perhaps you can see here uh, that i just created one exercise there could be like one two three four five assignments and uh, they can just be, uh, you can reorder those assignments. But if I say start, this activity has now started on the screens of the students. So they will be able to see this activity. If I go into it, I can see more or less what they see. And uh, if they have started their activity and they started recording, I will see that happening here. So let me just check if some of those students are really starting their recordings. No one is. So when they start their recording um, i can listen in to what they are doing and saying at that time but as long as they don't start their recording i just cannot uh, while we are on that this screen i'll draw your attention to the talk to the class option here at the bottom it is possible to switch on this talk to the class and now i am talking to the entire class at once so it's a bit complicated because I'm in the GoToMeeting webinar tool as well, of course, but without a GoToMeeting or Teams uh, uh, session, you can perfectly talk to the class and uh, speak to all the students together and even share my webcam to those students, okay? Um, that's something that is possible. Don't know what happens here, uh, uh, the recording. Well, Dickin has, uh, has been recording something it's being prepared so oh thomas as well so i think in a while i will have access to their recordings it's just uploading their recording uh, anyway if i stop this activity myself as a teacher it will automatically upload all the recordings to the system so i don't necessarily need to wait until they uh, stop recording. Let me stop this activity anyway. Um, I wanted to show that uh, this is how it works synchronously. 
these are a set of exercises, more or less the same set of exercises that I prepared yesterday. But look at what I can do here. There is this button here that says, uh, in this set of activities, practice mode. So I can switch the exercises that I prepared for, uh, that I prepared yesterday into practice mode. And I get this warning, are you sure you want to put all the quizzes, etc., and activities into practice mode? Yes. That means that those activities can now be started by the students themselves in self-practice mode. They don't need to wait until the teacher hits the start button as I did for these exercises here live. So I go back to the uh, results of this exercise here in review. Okay, I can watch. I don't know if you can see it, but I can watch the recordings of the students and hear what they were recording in that procrastination activity right now. Okay, um, so this is basically uh, what, what we can do already. Um, if I go back to my PowerPoint, um, these were the, the, the basic functions of LiveQ. Now, how can you use that in your class? Well, these are a few uh, examples of use cases. Um, so this can be typically used for listen and repeat. As I said before, and uh, actually I have an example of that as well, uh, as the activity, you can simply upload a sentence uh, with with a with a silent pause uh, between sentences and just ask them to listen and repeat and if they record well you can listen discreetly to what students are doing but it's also being recorded so you cannot listen to all the students at once and then after the session you can uh, listen to those uh, recordings so this can be both used by students in the class and remotely. Um, as you've seen me doing conversation activities in groups of, of two, but it can also be in groups of three, four, five. You've seen the option to, to choose the size of the groups. It's often called a pairing activity. Again, you can combine students at school in the class and remotely. They can be in one group, even if they are remotely connected. Um, you can have speaking activities or exercises as an assignment or a homework. So if you prepare a few and you put it in, in practice mode, you can do that easily. Um, you can have translation or interpreter uh, exams. Hmm? Um, you can upload a file and uh, the, if they start playing your uploaded file, it will cre create a simultaneous recording. That means that you can perfectly do simultaneous interpreter exercises or even exams and if you want that to be a secured exam why not combine that with a, a teams or a zoom uh, session for instance that tapes with a smartphone for instance behind their computer that uh, records their environment so you're sure that they are not helped for instance we have real life examples of uh, organizations doing that um, as I just mentioned, other use cases, simultaneous interpreting exercises or other uh, presentation exercises. It doesn't necessarily has to start with a, have to start with a, a source file. If you just give them an assignment and ask them to present something, if you activate the webcam, they will be able to present so you can assess their presentation skills. Yeah, their interview skills because there is a conversation activity you can pair uh, people and uh, they can do interview uh, skills, telephone skills again with that conversation activity. Lots of things depend on your instruction and your creativity as a teacher to to uh, invent uh, the good language activities that you want to use. And finally, of course, the pronunciation exercises. Why not just read out loud a text and that text, as you've seen me doing by adding the video, that text can be in that instruction file. So there will be a text available on the left part of the screen and that will be recorded uh, while they're reading out loud. So these are a few examples of use cases uh, of this LiveQ environment. Um, it really, um, is a, an excellent extension or replacement of the language lab in the school, but this one works remotely.
Now, what you have seen uh, here uh, will be available uh, at the beginning of 2021, but we're already preparing uh, more versions. So in the uh, near and a little bit further future, we'll have uh, a few options uh, more available. Um, Will in, in the spring summer version uh, of LiveQ, it will be possible to, re to monitor all the participants on the same screen, as you can see here. And then when you click on one of the students, you will be able to specifically go into intercom with that one student or have a look at uh, their screen individually. And you will be able to do that uh, with each of the students in the participants list. Um, Today, we don't have this option uh, that says request to speak. So students cannot speak to all today, but we'll add that function in, in, the, in the, the spring version. Um, so that means that as a teacher, you will be able to allow a student to address the whole class. Um, shame for screen sharing, that one student uh, will be able to share his or her screen with the entire class. Um, the microphone pre-check will be a very important one. We'll uh, automatically add this function for each activity um, so that we're sure that the microphone uh, speakers and microphone work before they enter a class. Uh, we've had issues uh, with students uh, not being able to speak uh, or, or record and we just want that to be solved before they enter a class. And we'll also add features to be able to do some exercises in a locked environment. So uh, we'll uh, add functionality to make this work in a lockdown browser that locks down the other functions on the computer to go into exam mode to be sure that they are not checking another website and on the same computer uh, while they are doing an exercise, for instance. And then in the autumn, and this is uh, also something important, we will add uh, a version specifically oriented to the interpreter market. Uh, we'll call that the LiveQ interpreter version. And the most important feature there is that we will add a live floor. That means that there will be uh, the option to record, uh, like all the students are listening to the same live floor, and then all the students, interpreter students, can do their interpretation in a specific uh, interpreter language then, their, their target language, while the source file, the live floor, will be recorded and their voice will be recorded in stereo, in separate tracks. That means that it will be possible to listen to either the combined uh, recording or just the floor or just the interpretation, which is a uh, often a very uh, um, uh, a, a, a function that is often used in interpreter uh, education and evaluation. So that will be added in the autumn version after we've added all those features because um, um, we need a few of these features first before we go into the details of the live queue interpreter. So this is uh, uh, what we will do with LiveQ next year. Um, don't know how familiar you are with the rest of the family uh, of the uh, environments that we have, but I specifically want to mention assessment queue and translation queue here, because already today we have uh, assessment queue running in, uh, in uh, various universities and high schools that are teaching languages and interpreting. Um, this is a platform. This is an asynchronous platform to do exams and exercises. There is no live component in assessment queue, but you can prepare and distribute exams and exercises, and it includes language exercises. It includes simultaneous and consecutive recording exercises to be done asynchronously. And uh, since the latest version, it also includes translation revision as a question type, so you can have a source text, a target text uh, translation that contains errors, and students are supposed to find the errors and categorize them in that uh, in that text. And the the even better version, the more developed version of translation revision, is a separate flat platform called Translation Q. Uh, and Translation Q is also about translation revision, helping the teachers to more objectively evaluate the translations 
And the uh, most important feature of translation queue is that it includes a revision memory, meaning that all the errors that are found by the teacher or the evaluator are stored in a memory, in a revision memory, and that can be reused, those stored errors are automatically found or activated in all the new translations that you present to the system. So this is the same family of, of uh, products. If you're familiar with one of uh, our products, you'll find your way very easily and it uses the same uh, user-friendly environment and it will combine uh, features. Uh, so you really uh, feel at home when you're in this uh, family of products. So to, to end this uh, webinar, uh, just repeat that if you have more questions, feel free to ask uh, to the person that you know best, uh, myself, my colleague Dirk or uh, Dickin, um, or Philip, who is the product manager and uh, the product uh, uh, responsible uh, for the development of this uh, LiveCube project. So, this is it. Uh, this was the webinar. Uh, thank you for your interest. Um, 